The Quantum Afterlife At 80 years old, Robert Redford plays a scientist who proves the existence of the afterlife in The Discovery. So kudos to him for taking on this age-appropriate Netflix production. The film was a slow-moving, introspective fair, delivering the subject matter with even more gravitas than it would on its own. The cast is quirky and melodramatic, which gives impact to the last 20 minutes of the show when Redford's character admits he had it all wrong about the afterlife. In the scientist's previous research, he definitively proves that a person's consciousness goes somewhere else at the time of death, hence the discovery. This leads to mass suicides around the world since now there's a guarantee of a glorious life reset after death. The film begins with the fallout from the discovery as Redford's character is interviewed by Mary Steenbergen's TV reporter. She attempts to get the scientist to accept responsibility for all the deaths, upward of four million since the discovery, and he won't. After all, it's a matter of personal choice. The next step for Redford scientist is to obtain a physical recording of where this somewhere else is. For this, he needs a cadaver, apparently more convincing than flatlining himself and some of his staff doing the research on this. The cadaver tells a mind-blowing tale, which gets me to why this film has such an impact on me as a quantum physics buff. Okay, spoiler alert. Via a quivering and ghostly video image from the cadaver's point of view, we see a known local hospital where the subject visits a family member. At first, everyone thinks the video feed is simply a string of memories, which would invalidate the premise that the machine retrieving this video is plugged into the subject's current view of the afterlife. But then, the scientist's son, and rude skeptic, discovers that there are small details in the video that don't match the current reality. A door in a hallway at the hospital that isn't there in the video, a tattoo on the arm of the subject that doesn't match the one on the cadaver's body, and a few other things that get everyone asking, what exactly are we looking at here? And then the chilling conclusion. What we call the afterlife is simply another version of the life we've just led. So, after our death, we step into basically the same life we just left, all the same people, same issues, and same settings, except we've lost the memory of where we had just been because we've left that mind behind and taken on a new one in a parallel universe. So, no God, no angels, no pearly gates, just more of the same. Now, what impacted me was that this theory fits in very nicely with what quantum science knows about the behaviors of subatomic particles. Such features as spooky action at a distance, where electrons can be at two places at once, or share information instantaneously across huge distances, or go into the future and change its own past. These characteristics are common in the quantum particle wave world. We're all made up of these quantum particles. So is it such a stretch to believe that we too have the same spooky possibilities lurking within our being? A somewhat shocking explanation given by engineers about how quantum computing works is that all mathematical problems have been solved in all parallel universes. Inform a particle in this universe of a problem, and it automatically retrieves a solution from some parallel universe. In other words, quantum particles travel among parallel universes instantaneously, and those particles are what make up our very own lives. What if the afterlife is all about making new choices, about doing things differently than we did them before to create a different result for ourselves? The fact that we use the death of the body as a way to jump parallel universes in this scenario now seems, in light of this new possibility, rather overdramatic and anachronistic. I then began to realize 
that I've been catching glimpses of another version or versions of myself my whole life. Usually they are higher, more wonderful versions of me where I've made the choices that have led me to a utopian existence. This fits in with the promise of most religions about the afterlife. We go to a loving, beautific place where all of our loved ones welcome us with open arms. What if what they're referring to is a, simply a parallel universe where we can choose anew amongst those possibilities? And what if we could just go there right now? You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX, www.pureenergyrx.com.